How to choose a digital video camera. Hello and welcome to Video Jug. We're going to discuss which features make for a good choice when buying a digital video camera. We've come a long way since the Super 8 home film cameras of the 60s and 70s. The age of analogue home recording has died and we now live in a brave new digital world where the video camera, or camcorder as it's also called, has evolved into all shapes and sizes. Such a wide variety of choice can leave the consumer feeling pretty dumbfounded. But never fear, Video Jug is here to help. Step 1. Tape or disc. One question you may ask yourself is whether you want a camera that records onto tapes or discs. Tapes and discs are just two of the formats onto which digital video can be recorded. Others include hard disk drive cameras and card cams. To see an overview of the benefits and drawback of the major formats, please watch the Video Jug film called Digital Video Cameras. Tape or disc. Step 2. Pixels. Digital pixels are made up of hundreds and thousands of tiny dots of lights arranged in a grid. Each of these dots is called a picture element, or a pixel. A megapixel is a million pixels. The greater the number of pixels, the clearer your images will be. However, when considering a camera, always ask for the number of effective pixels a camera captures, instead of the gross number of pixels. Effective pixels are the number the camera's CCD chip actually uses when recording. Step 3. CCDs. Pixel information is captured on a CCD chip behind the lens, the same way film captures light for a film camera. These chips come in different sizes. Most home camcorders have chips between one sixth of an inch to one third of an inch. The larger the CCD, the more light is taken in with the image, resulting in brighter pictures with better colours. Another important factor is the number of chips. Three chip cameras have a different chip to capture each primary colour. Red, green and blue. Three chip cameras give you far more vivid colours. Step 4. Low light performance. As most home camcorders are used indoors, it's important to find a camera that can perform well in low lit conditions. The better models will not only have a number of automatic mode settings in their menus for dark conditions, but will also allow you to manually set features such as the iris and shutter speed to allow more light into the camera. Some camcorders have an option called Gain to help with filming in dark conditions. Using Gain boosts the light levels being recorded, but be aware that the picture quality will suffer when using this function. Some models even come with a night vision function, making it possible to shoot in pitch black conditions. Step 5. Zoom. On a digital camera there are two types of zoom, digital and optical. Optical zooms are the important ones, as they maintain picture clarity. Some camcorders boast massive digital zooms, but all they are doing is enlarging a part of the existing picture, which means there are less pixels and the image becomes less clear. Step 6. Image stability. Apart from low light, the second biggest complaint for picture quality is shaky pictures. However, the most important feature for stability is how comfortable you are with the camera. Pick it up. Imagine operating it. Is the weight distribution comfortable in your hand? Can you access the controls without fumbling for them? Step 7. Interconnectivity. Each camcorder will come with a number of sockets in the back to allow you to connect the video camera to a VCR or DVD recorder to transfer images, or to a computer for editing. Most have the sockets for the old-fashioned red, white and yellow audio-visual leads for connection to VCR and DVD recorders, but some also have S-video ports. Check what connections are on your computer, VCR or DVD recorder to ensure they're compatible. Step 8. LCD screens. Most modern camcorders come with LCD screens to view what you're filming and to review what you've already filmed. Again, the more pixels on the LCD screen, the better. Remember, these screens use up the battery very quickly and can be hard to view in strong daylight, so it may be worth checking the camera also has a traditional viewfinder. Step 9. Sound. Unfortunately, most built-in microphones on digital cameras suffer from picking up handling noise from your camera. If sound is important to you, it's worth checking that you can fit an external microphone to your camera and also if there is a headphone socket to monitor what you're recording. Step 10. Manual settings. If you like just pointing and shooting, a good selection of automatic settings in the menu will be useful. However, you may want to tailor your image to the conditions you're shooting in. Ask the salesperson if the camera comes with manual controls for the iris, focus, white balance and shutter speed, as these are all functions that affect your picture quality. 
Step 11. Where to buy. Make sure your camera comes from a reputable source. The warranties from major department stores can save you money in the long run. Many stores are happy to give you advice as they're not affiliated with any particular brand. Look for approved websites when purchasing from the net. Step 12. Regional formats. When ordering a camera from abroad, make sure it has the same operating system as your home country. NTSC is used in the Americas, while PAL is the preferred system in Europe. Step 13. Enjoy your camera. If you've taken the time to research your camera before you buy it, hopefully you will ensure that you can enjoy and record your future with it.